Hey guys, it's Rogway here and it's time for another tutorial. Um, today we are talking about histograms and you know what, histograms seems to be something that confuses uh, newer photographers. Uh, they're not really sure what it means, it's there, it's always kind of in their face when they're taking photos, but they don't necessarily understand what they're looking at. I'm just going to go jump on um, Google here and uh, do a quick search for histograms so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, you probably have seen them before, but um, I'm going to hopefully explain once and for all as to what a histogram is telling you and how to make your photos better by using a histogram. So if I go for an, uh, an image on histograms, we get these bar type um, photos here. I'm going to go camera histogram because that will give us a little more detail. Now, basically a histogram is this bar chart type of a looking uh, graphic that you'll see on your camera. Sometimes it looks like this. And what it's trying to tell you is the tonal range for your photo. So it's giving you basically a preview of all the colors within your picture and it's displayed on a graph. Now if you look um, at a histogram what you need to know is that the bright part of your image is on the right hand side, your midtones are in the middle and your shadows are on the left side. If we compare this to let's say Ansel Adams who is a very famous oops famous photographer, he invented something called the zone system. And if we look at the zone system, you'll notice that his zones of exposure match very closely to the way that a histogram is set up. All right, so what I'm going to show you now is how to decipher what a histogram is showing you in a photograph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both Lightroom and uh, Camera Raw to illustrate this. And I'm going to show you some things you can turn on uh, to make your life a little bit easier so that you know um, if your photo is giving you an accurate display of what that color should look like. All right, so we're going to go to Lightroom here, and I've already got a picture kind of ready to go. Um, here's a photo that um, I took just recently, and you'll notice... Here is our histogram along the side. Now, in the library view, um, it gives you just a very basic histogram, kind of an overview of what the color is doing in the photo. And if you use that same mental uh, mindset, like what we just looked at here, where left is dark, right is light, and middle is mid colors, sort of uh, a guide to go by, You'll notice that we got a lot of dark colors indicated by the large arc on the dark side and less, I would say less bright colors because it kind of tapers off here. It's not as high. So in order to really manipulate our histogram, what we have to do is we have to go to develop. So I'm going to click develop and it's going to bring it into editing mode. And you're going to see that the histogram itself hasn't changed. However, we now have these little triangles in the corners and we can also see that if we roll over our histogram you can see below down here that when I roll over this part I'm getting the words blacks, shadows, exposure or sometimes it's called midtone, highlights and whites. And this helps us figure out how we can adjust the color in our photographs. So let's start with the blacks side. Now the blacks are the darkest parts of your images, the shadows, the really, really dark areas of our photos. It's the back of these rocks. It's the trunk of these trees. It's the darkness inside the forest. And if we want to adjust that, we go to the slider that says blacks. And you'll notice that as we go over that, this also changes to blacks. It tells us that we are affecting this part of the histogram. So as I move the black slider around, you'll notice that what it's doing is it's pulling 
and pushing the blacks of the shot around, the darkest parts of our image. Now, sometimes on an uncalibrated monitor, it's hard to tell if you've gone too far. Sometimes people have their monitor turned up bright, some people have it turned down dark. So that's why they give us these great little triangle thingies. And what happens is, if I turn that on, you'll notice that nothing changes, but the triangle is now highlighted. Watch what happens when I pull the, sh the blacks too dark. So I'm going to pull it to the left, it's going to get darker and darker, and look what starts to happen. All these ugly blue areas of the photo start showing up. And what it's telling me is that our photograph has gone too far into the dark, basically off the edge of the histogram. And what happens is we've lost all detail and information in those areas. So by default, I usually leave these on all the time. Now, if I slide it back, you'll notice I can slide it until I lose those little uh, blue areas. You'll notice it starts obviously from the darkest areas and moves its way out. This is very important because if you're losing information on the edges of your histogram, you're losing detail in your shot. You basically want to have all the color contained within the middle of the histogram without excess touching the edges. So in this case, I'm going to bring my blacks up around there where I'm happy with it. And you'll see that what that has done is just pushed the blacks away from the edge. Next, shadows. So shadows is the next sort of area. And you'll notice that the name matches down here, shadows. And as we slide this along, you'll see that we can stretch and squeeze that part of our histogram. So now we're manipulating the dark parts of the area. It's not the darkest parts, but it's like the darker tones. So we can adjust that as we see fit. You'll notice that if we squish it too far to the left, it starts to push some things completely black. So we try to find somewhere where that's going to be nicely balanced out without going too far. So that was shadows. Now the exposure part is the largest adjustment and that is the mid-tone range of the photo. Basically all these tones that are in between. And that is shown by the exposure slider. And we can basically pull that up or down and move the whole middle of our histogram up or down. And you'll see that that can really affect our highlights on the right hand side. And it just basically does a huge shift to our histogram from the middle. Now again, I always keep an eye to make sure that nothing is becoming underexposed or too dark. So I leave my exposure somewhere where it's comfortable to the eye. That's the middle. So now let's move on to the next one, which is called highlights. Now we're basically looking at the opposite of what we saw um, on the shadows side, we're now looking at the lighter tones. This is the parts that aren't completely white, but they're pretty light. Like if you look at the froth in the, the falls here, that's mainly where our highlights are in this shot. Some of the light areas on the rocks and so on. So that is also signify, or um, it, it has the matching uh, title highlights in the adjustments. So as we slide this, we can make those highlights go pretty much completely white. And you can see that the histogram starts to get pushed all the way to the right. Or we can tone them back and bring back as much detail in those highlights as possible. All right. Keep in mind that sometimes when a photo is underexposed, you can bring back the detail by adjusting the blacks and the shadows. But if a photo is overexposed, if it's gone to white, if it looks like this, that detail will never come back. So what I always like to do is try to bring back as much details in my highlights as possible. Most cases that, that helps. Now the last section is whites and these are the brightest areas. These are the areas that are the highest brightness. This is the foam that we see at the top of these uh, waves. It is the brightest areas of our shot. And it's this little band on the right hand side. Like I said, whenever possible, always expose to the left 
of your histogram. Always expose dark rather than exposing light because you can't bring back detail in an overexposed image. And you really shouldn't bring back detail in an underexposed image. However, it's easier to work with than an overexposed one. We got the same little triangle. I'm going to turn that on. And you'll notice that in our photo right now we have nothing that is blown out or overexposed. As we adjust the white part of our histogram using the white slider, adjust this, that tiny little part of the histogram, we pull that up, we notice, look what happens. We're starting to lose major detail in the water here. And as I pull that down, I can get it to a point where I haven't lost any detail right about there, but it's still as bright as it can be. Anyways, that explains that part of it. Um, that explains the histogram and how it's used in Lightroom. Okay, and once you're happy with that and you don't see any underexposure or overexposure, you can now move on to adjust your colors. It's always good to come back to this and take a look at your histogram and see what it's doing just to make sure that nothing has changed, especially after you make some color adjustments or maybe you add a preset or whatever. You need to double check that. Now, let me just quit uh, Sorry, Lightroom for a second. I'm just going to quit this. I'm going to show you the same thing in Camera Raw. And so in this case, I'm just going to pull it to Photoshop because that'll launch uh, Adobe Raw or Camera Raw. And you'll notice that without me having to explain too much here, we're going to see the same set of sliders. All right, so let's just give that a second to load. And really, there's not much for me to tell you here. The difference between doing it in RAW and doing it in Lightroom is Lightroom visually shows you what it is adjusting. It visually shows you which part of the histogram is being affected. In RAW, it's just going to show the adjustment and not necessarily give you that visual aid to show you which part of the histogram is being changed. And I find with amateur photographers who don't quite understand what a histogram is showing you, it can sometimes be misleading because it's not really showing you how it's being adjusted. So if I go to, let's go full screen here, you'll notice that I've got the exact same adjustments, exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. I've got the same arrows as well that I could turn on and off. And you'll notice that as I slide over my histogram, I have the same uh, description of what's being changed. The only thing that I think is missing that they really should add is as I adjust my highlights, for example, it should highlight the part of the histogram that's being changed. Same exact things, if you turn these on, you'll notice that as I blow my picture out or overexpose it, there's those areas. It's exactly the same. It does a great job, and hopefully that explains what the histogram is showing you a little bit better. So next time, when you're taking your photos, if you notice that the bar, uh, the bars go off the side, either on the left, underexposed, or too far on the right, hopefully you can interpret that as, um, as to its meaning. Um, don't just settle for a photo. Uh, make sure you're checking your histogram. Make sure you don't have the bars going off the edge unless it was intentional unless you wanted a pure white or a pure black part of your image, always check it. Make sure you don't have anything over or underexposed. That will lead to much, much better photos. Till next time, thanks for tuning in.